Hey guys, so I figured I'd answer some more YouTube videos. This is more tech-oriented content here. So, under my video on, was it, learning code can be fuzzy. Fuzzy meaning unclear, so you just keep working through it. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, I'm confused in one thing. People say on Quora, but don't do is learn data structures, DS data structures with JavaScript. But I want to work as a full stack developer. So how, how do I learn data structures and on which lang? Don't worry about data structures. You learn data structures when you need to learn data structures. <sighs> yes, if you're going to go do an interview, they might want you to, uh, to work on data structures to show how you can iterate through an array or something like that, which is a type of data structure. And in that situation where you're going to go apply for a job, what you ought to do once you learn your basics and your core, you should look online and say, okay, typical JavaScript questions that they'll ask you uh, in an interview. Or typical, if you can do PHP, typical PHP questions, typical Java. And you're going to find them and just work through them, make sure you understand best you can. And you just, uh, you just prep for your interview that way. That being said, I have to say, when it comes to web stack developers, you're just going to need to understand basic arrays. That's pretty much it. Typically, you're just pulling stuff from a database, you put it into a result set, and then you just iterate through that result set to display the contents of your database query on the page. And that's pretty much it. So I wouldn't get too concerned about data structures. You, uh, in, in terms of all the different data structures that are out there, in day-to-day -day practice, mm, not that important, except for what I just said. So if you want to learn the web stack, don't worry about data structures. Just worry about the web stack, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, and whatever service site language you want to do. PHP, Python, Java, C Sharp, Ruby, whatever it is you want to do, JavaScript, of course. Uh, the, my top choice is freelance, is PHP. Uh, otherwise, it'd probably be JavaScript because it's getting a lot of mojo nowadays. I would also consider uh, server-side Java if you want to do enterprise, meaning go work for big companies. But in that situation, you need, you need a degree of some sort. Or maybe server-side ASP.NET with C Sharp. Again, probably you're going to need a degree at some point. You could do Python or Ruby. I would do Python first and Ruby. But again, Python, Ruby for web apps, for web apps is more of a niche. Like there's many more opportunities in the PHP world in terms of web apps. And, there's, and if you want to go work for large organizations, they're probably going to be doing Java or .NET in that regard. And apparently they're going into JavaScript, Node.js type of server-side stuff. So it depends on the type of web stack programming you want to do. Regardless of the type, you have to get into big three, HTML5, CS3, JavaScript. Don't worry about data structures. It's overplayed, except maybe when you're doing the silly interview where they uh, come up with all these crazy requirements uh, like you know, being able to uh, work your way through all these archaic problems that may or may not come up or come up very rarely. Most of the time when you're doing web apps, these, most of the time you're just dealing with database issues, understanding how to, how to create secure connections to the database, efficient connections, not secure, but creating, creating, excuse me, creating a secure connection to the database is very easy, it's trivial, it's, you know, boom, boom, you're done. But understanding how to write good queries and how to structure your queries, when to use certain types of queries interacting with your database, that's the more tricky part. Understanding how to structure your database efficiently for the given needs of your application, that's the tricky part. And guess what? That's most of the, the job. Most of the job of web app developer is collecting information in a web page, processing that information so there's, uh, there's no attacks, SQL injection, stuff like that. And so that the data is clean, then storing that database, that information in the database, and then retrieving that database at the right time. That's pretty much what most web apps do, and they usually want to present it in a good way depending on your client's needs. So in terms of data structures, again, unless you're interviewing or you're doing a very specific type of programming, I wouldn't worry too much. Learn the basic array types or collection types depending on the language. JavaScript is fine. Then you uh, go from there. Now, if you want to do the web stack, there's no point learning C++ data structures. They're not writing C++. It's 
no point in learning Python data structures. You're not writing Python. Although, that being said, all modern languages share many of the same data structures. They have different ways of looking at it, though. Anyway, I hope that helps. Ah, I love comments like this. What a great teacher you are. Just finished the five intro courses. That's my web stack, uh, my IWD course package. Looking for the next step. Suggestions. Yes, you've done the five intro courses. HTML5, CSS, excuse me, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, PHP, SQL. These are the core languages of most web apps. Then right there, I would jump into one of the mini projects that I provide. Do the uh, form validation with PHP and JavaScript. Do the PHP tag cloud. Do the simple login system. Do the MVC login system. And then from there, there's other projects, but from there what I would do is I would go out and talk to people. i say, hey, I want to build you a simple website. I want to build you a web app. Do it. That's how you're going to learn. Yes, you're not going to have all the answers right away, but because you have your foundation now, if you come up to a situation where you're not sure what to do, you just look it up really easily because you know how to look it up. It's like, it's like now that you know how to read and write, you don't need to go out there and learn how to spell every single word in the English dictionary. You know how to spell words. You can just go to the thesaurus, look at cinnamon, and ah, boom, 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 here we go. Okay, that's what that word means. It's simple as that. Same thing with programming if you're taught the core. Hey, Steph. Quick question about Python. I'm always coming across comments from people saying Python is dead or dying out. I started learning Blender 3D modeling software and it uses Python. A lot of apps, a lot of programs use Python to automate it and so forth. And I wanted to learn it because I thought it might be useful. What do you think? Somebody who tells you that Python is dead or dying is pretty clueless. Have you heard of AI? Have you heard of machine learning? Python is the king in that, uh, that field, that area. I actually, I'm going to be interviewing a couple of friends of mine who have companies that are using Python to build their AI uh, stack, if you will. So the whole idea that Python is dead or dying is, is, is literally ridiculous. Python is going to be here forever because of AI ML and because it's used in all kinds of software like Blender to automate it and there's others. And uh, it could be used over the web stack, et cetera, et cetera. But just because of the AI and, and machine learning implementation Python is not going anywhere. What a, another silly comment on the web. Here's a comment from a teacher. I also have to tell my pupils over and over, better to learn vocabulary for three times 10 minutes than a half an hour at a time. He's just confirming what I was teaching, I guess in this video, that frequency is more important than time in terms of learning. Better that you learn, as in, his, as in this example, three times 10 minutes and spending a half an hour at a time. So you do 10 minutes, you walk away for two hours, do another 10 minutes, walk away. To, because our lizard brain, the super powerful brain in, that we all possess, pays attention to frequency more than anything else. If you keep seeing things over and over again, we'll say, hey, that's kind of important. And then it will use its tremendous power to start learning things. And you're going to learn much more quickly. This is not uh, theory. It's not just personal experience. This is proven in uh, the science. Can I use Python to make voice recognition app like Siri, iPhone, S Voice on Samsung? I would imagine so. I would imagine so. I would imagine they're using Python to do the voice recognition. I haven't looked into it, but I would imagine. My only concern with that is that Python might be uh, running a little slow for that kind of work, but maybe not, because what they do to compensate for Python's lack of speed at runtime is that they'll write the core of the engine in a fast processing language like C++. And then they'll write everything around it in Python because if they wrote it all in C++, it's super slow to write. It's a real, real, it's, it's very hard because it just takes much longer. So what they'll do is they'll write the core, the, the engine in C++, the, the, the part of the app, part of the program that has to do heavy processing. And then they will write the, um, everything around it in Python. So yes, probably Python. I was just looking into it. I've never written voice recognition software, so I can't say for sure, but that would be my guess. Somebody asked a couple of videos ago, where can, I where can we look around for code 
Somebody asked a few videos ago, where can we look around for code that is already out there that we might be able to use? Thanks. Well, it depends on the type of projects that you're doing. So let's say you wanted to build uh, CMS. And you just type in open source CMS in Google and psh, a whole bunch will appear. A lot of these uh, open source code bases will be stored on a place called GitHub, where you download it and then you can start working on it. You just search for whatever piece of software you want to build, and then you take it from there. You might look up shopping cart system PHP or shopping cart system Ruby, Rails, shopping cart system uh, JavaScript, etc. You get the idea. You just use Google. Google's your friend in that regard. So I'll end off. Somebody asked me, do you film with your movie camera or your phone? Did you film this? So I, the car vlogs, I actually filmed with my my Google Pixel phone. Yes, the Google Pixel phone takes very good video when you have good lighting, that's for sure. And in internals like this, these days I'm using my cinema camera and I think I'm finally learning how to use this bloody thing properly. Now, if you looked at, I did, I must have done like 100 videos with this new camera and I was still learning it because a cinema camera has a lot of power and capability, but you have to know what you're doing. And finally, finally, Oh, it took 100 videos, but finally I mastered, again, the key fundamentals of using this camera, and that was understanding exposure and white balance and understanding how that all works together with, of course, the basic, what do they call the exposure triangle, the aperture size, the um, ISO, uh, et cetera. So these are the things that I had to learn. Again, just camera basics, how to operate the camera, and I think the video quality is now more consistent at least. All right, that's the end of the vlog. Bye-bye.